Disney Cruise and 27 Pro Tips. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Anne with some more of your Disney's and today we're talking all the pro tips. I'm all about pro tips, so let's just dive in. Number one, you can carry on two bottles of wine or six bottles of beer per person per port. So the important thing there is that you have to be over 21, you have to have it in your carry-on luggage, can't be in your checked luggage, and you have to carry it on. Number two, online check-in. You want to make sure and do your online check-in as soon as possible. For new cruisers, that's going to be 75 days before you sail, and you can sign in at midnight Eastern Standard Time to make those selections. This is a big deal if there's some things that are really important to you. You use it to schedule your port arrival time, specialty dining, alcohol tastings. This is also when you can schedule port excursions. You also want to check into the nursery and the kids clubs signups. Those are really important. So I just recommend get on there as soon as you can and get everything that you want booked. If for some reason it's all booked up, don't worry. Keep checking until you cruise. Some people may just cancel and then you can get the reservation. Also, if you have not been able to get it online, as soon as you get on the ship, go straight to guest services and see if there's any availability. Number three, the sommelier bin. They have this on the Disney Wonder in the Cadillac Lounge. It's $10 per glass and you can choose red, white, or sparkling. It's a great way to try out new wines without having to pay full cost, so to speak. Basically, someone will buy a glass of wine that's worth more than $10 a glass and whatever's left that isn't going to be drank fast enough will go to that sommelier bin so you can try more expensive wines at a more affordable price. Number four, Navigator app. You want to make sure and have the Navigator app downloaded before your online check-in. You can do all of your check-in through the app and if for some reason you just choose not to do that, then you definitely want to have it downloaded before you cruise. It has the cocktail of the day on there, it has menus for restaurants, what time care character experiences are. It has all the activities from the teen club. You can text with other people in your party. So that app just really has all the information you need for your cruise. All of those details won't show up until you get to the cruise, but it will have all the check-in and a little countdown before cruise. And I always like watching that little countdown. It's just fun. Number five, check for price decreases. I know that seems surprising, but I have seen costs go down. So it's good to just to check for that because sometimes it does happen. So if it does happen, just contact them, your travel agent or Disney, let them them know and they'll refund you the difference. Number six, when you're packing, leave room or bring an empty bag for easier packing when you go home. So if you have your big suitcase, leave it half empty. That way you've got room when you come home. Obviously, if you need things in there to be secured, then you might want to use it for padding and go ahead and fill up that suitcase. But you can also just stuff a duffel bag in there so that you have an extra bag when you come home, just in case. Because if you're doing fish extenders, I'll explain more on that later, or just buying a lot of souvenirs, it's good to have room to put them in to go home. Number seven is prepaid tips. You can prepay your tips on your onboard account. They suggest $13 per person per day. This is for your room host and your three servers at dinner. We like to prepay those so that it's just taken care of. We always bring extra cash for extra tips because they usually go above and beyond. Number eight, make sure you arrive a day early. It is so important to arrive a day early. The trip is so expensive and it's so fabulous. You do not want to start it out being stressed because you're running late. If for some reason your flight is delayed, if you're coming in a day ahead of time, you know you've got that extra 24 hours, you're probably going to make it there. So whatever you do, just arrive a day early and get your hotel as close to the port as you can. It just makes it really nice to see the ship in the morning when you wake up and to just have an easy commute from your hotel to the ship. That's one of my favorite things is waking up in the morning and seeing the ship outside and knowing it's a mile away. We usually just go straight on for lunch because I try to get the earliest port arrival time that I can. Number nine is for the Rainforest Room. The Rainforest Room is extra. I believe it's $30 or more per person per day. So it's a big consideration. But on the Dream and the Fantasy, the Rainforest Room has these two hot tubs that overlook the ocean. And it's amazing. I highly recommend getting it to experience that. They also have heated loungers and some showers with different types of mists, sprays, temperatures, etc. But my very favorite is those hot tubs. Number 10, make sure you bring cash for room service and port. They do have 24 hour room service available. There's a few items that are packaged that will not be included, but almost everything else is. We bring cash so that we can tip one or two dollars per item, depending on how many we get. And we also bring cash so that we have it for the port. It's just easier when you have cash for the ports because they'll take credit cards, but sometimes that's a little bit of an issue and it can take some time. It's just a lot easier to just have cash with you. Number 11, make sure you leave time in your schedule to just enjoy and have fun. There's so much going on. 
on. It can be so easy to be planned the entire day, but I highly recommend just taking a little time to soak it all in. Being in the middle of the ocean, maybe with some funnel vision on deck, which is their big movie screen up on the pool deck. That's one of our favorites later in the evening is to just go watch whatever movie they have up on the pool deck. Just whatever you like. Read a book, have some coffee, enjoy a cognac tasting, whatever you really enjoy. Just make sure to give yourself some time to soak that in. Number 12, one of my favorite tips also has to do with room service. You can order warm cookies and milk at bedtime, which is really fun. You can also get the Mickey bar. Some people like to have the cookies and the Mickey bar and make it a huge ice cream sandwich. They have a little basic menu that you can hang on the door. It'll have juice, fruit, bagels, coffee, etc. We like to get a little bit of fruit and a pot of coffee and we choose it for 9 30 in the morning so that's kind of our wake-up call and then we'll take that out onto the veranda. It's a fabulous way to wake up. Morning coffee on the veranda is one of my favorite places in the world. I highly recommend trying that out. Some people also will order the coffee in the evening and then just use it in the morning. It stays warm overnight. Whatever is your preference. There's also um, the coffee shop available where you do pay for specialty coffees and there's also coffee available up on deck so there's plenty there. We like coffee, so that's important. <laughs> Coffee's super important for us, so we really make sure we know where it's at. Okay, here's another one that I really love too. Number 13, Flo's French Fries for the win. They have Flo's French Fries on the Fantasy, and I believe it's on the Dream as well, and their French Fries are phenomenal. I don't know what it is about them, but if you have any desire for French Fries, or if you have a hangover, they help a lot. Number 14, Icebreakers the first night. It's really important for the kids to go to the kids club the first night. They do some icebreakers and bonding and so they can get to know the other kids that are going to be on their sailing and just makes it a lot more fun for them. Before our first cruise I told my son a little bit about this because I had done some research and so I thought that he would probably just be gone the whole time hanging out in the teen club because I had read how fabulous it is. It's important to note that Vibe on the Dream and the Fantasy is different than the one on the Magic and the Wonder. He just liked the Dream a lot better. The layout is really fun. They had a hallway that is like metal and it shuts off so the parents can't even get in during certain times. I'm sure you can if you need to, but you get the idea. It was just really cool. And so being there that first night when we got on the ship, I said, you know, go check out the teen club. And he was there for the first night and all the bonding activities, the late night scavenger hunt, whatever it was. And I never saw him. It was so hard to get him out of the teen club. He didn't want to have anything else to do. So he was surprised in hindsight that he enjoyed it so much and I was just glad I encouraged him to be there earlier so that he could take part in the icebreakers and enjoy the club. He really had a great time there. He actually has people that he is still friends with on Facebook to this day from that cruise. Number 15, the romance package. There are packages that you can order prior to sale that have, they have birthday packages, cakes, wine packages, all kinds of stuff. The one that I really enjoy and has been my favorite souvenir except for ornaments. Those are a favorite souvenir as well because they're delightfully affordable and they have the year and location sometimes. But the romance package has two adult size robes that are really soft and they have the Disney Cruise Line logo on there which I like. Comes with a bottle of Prosecco, a box of chocolates, and a rose for $135. You can also get that as non-alcoholic I believe for $115 or you can get it with just one robe instead of two. So there's a couple of different ways you can get it when you get your room it'll be all set up in there for you and it's just a really nice way to start the cruise it's also really nice to have those robes both on the cruise and when you get home number 16 start boning before the cruise B-O-N-I-N-E. Bonine is what we use for seasickness. We also use C-Ban and I bring some throat lozenge type things that have ginger and lemon etc. But starting the bonine the night before you leave helps it just get into your system and makes the cruise a lot more pleasurable for me. I just don't have to worry about seasickness. Number 17, Facebook groups. There's a Disney cruising group on Facebook and they keep a list in there of other groups on Facebook for individual cruises. Obviously, safety factors, figure that out for yourself. I'm not suggesting anything either way about that. I'm just saying that there are Facebook groups out there and people really enjoy interacting with the group before it's time to sail. You can get to know some of the people that will be on there. Prior to 2020, people did what was called fish extenders. When you get to your stateroom, there's a little fish where people would hang like a three-pot 
pocket organizer for a secret Santa type gift exchange with other people in the Facebook group. I have seen posts for the Magic at Sea Cruises that they are not allowed. So I don't know if those are going to be allowed in the future or not, but if you're interested in that type of pixie dusting and gift exchange with other people in the group, you can go to Facebook group and find your cruise and see if fish extenders are allowed anymore. They used to do ornament exchanges, magnet exchanges, recipe exchanges. It can be quite a bit of fun leading up to your cruise. Number 18, get ornaments. I wish I had thought of this when we first started cruising. They're usually between $10 and $20. I think they're a really great price. They will say the year that you're sailing and sometimes the ship. We also like to get them in port so that it'll have, for example, Tortola 2013. It's really nice to have those over the holidays. You can just think back on all the fun that you had through the years. Number 19, free charms. Go to the port shopping desk and they'll let you know how you can get those. Sometimes they have them at that desk. They'll have a port shopping talk where they will tell you how to get the free charm. They also will have giveaways during the port shopping talk, so I like to attend those. The jewelry education is really useful, but I really go in there honestly to see if I win something and just see what's unique about that port. I just enjoy the education of it also. Number 20 is placeholders. If you're on the cruise and you want to have another cruise, which almost everybody does, go to the cruise desk and you can book a placeholder for $250. Then when you get home, you can pick which cruise you'd like to use it for. You also get 10% off of your cruise if you sail within the next two years when you book through a placeholder. So it can be a nice way to save a little money. Number 21, use dinner photo ops for family pics. Before dinner, every night in main dining, they'll have photographers out there to take your photos. Some cruises will have semi-formal or formal nights. Whatever nights, even if it's not a formal night, it doesn't matter. They'll be out there taking pictures. They'll be out there for pirate night. Great way to get family photos for your Christmas card. I know a lot of people like to do that. They're there dressed up for formal night anyway. Just wait in the line and you can get some great photos. They will also use your camera to take a photo with as well. So you don't have to pay for the cruise photo if you don't want to. 22 is princess gathering tickets and character breakfast. You want to make sure and book those when you're doing your online check-in. They do not cost anything, but you will need the tickets to attend those. 23, there is a sleepwalking goofy. Yes, I said that. There is a sleepwalking goofy. If you get up early enough in the morning, you just might see him. I haven't done it yet, but I have heard he's out there. I've seen photo, so keep your eyes open. Number 24. In the mornings, they will have a Bloody Mary mimosa cart. They're $5 each. It'll be there till noon, and it's usually out around the pool area and can be a great way to start the morning. Number 25 is the ribeyes at Serenity Bay. Serenity Bay is the adult-only area on Castaway Key. Their lunch over there has ribeyes almost every time, and they are so good. Number 26, family tables. They do family tables on Disney Cruise Line and will seat you with another family. So if you do not want that, make sure to request your own table. It is not guaranteed, but if you really don't want to sit with strangers, just be sure to request your own table. And our last pro tip, sometimes over at Serenity Bay, you can get two for one cocktails late in the afternoon. Okay, and here's a pro pro tip just because I have to have one more pro tip. When you do your online check-in, you're allowed one Palo brunch and one Palo dinner per cruise. If you don't have a sea day on your cruise, you might not have Palo brunch, but this is a tip for Palo dinner. If you want a second Palo dinner, I have heard that if you go up there on the first night of the cruise, you can get a second reservation. I would go as soon as you get on the ship if that's something you want, but some people really love Palo, so that's something to look into. Make sure you go subscribe and ring that little bell so you'll be notified as soon as we put out any new videos. Thanks for joining us, everybody. That's all the pro tips I have today. I know there's a lot of Disney Cruise pros out there, so please let us know any pro tips that you may have down in the comments below, and we'll see you real soon with some more Disney's.